I think it is clear to believe in the power of ideas. Fresh thank you to the Manhattan Institute. Good morning. I'm, I'm Howard Husick. I'm the Vice President of the Manhattan Institute. It's my pleasure to be here this morning to introduce our conference on the importance of building a national electricity distribution grid, and especially to introduce our senior fellow, Peter Huber, author of the paper entitled The Million Volt Answer to Oil, which is the cornerstone for today's conference. First, permit me a few words about the Manhattan Institute for those of you who may not be familiar with us. We're a policy research institute based in New York, and our interests are national in scope. They include a wide range of domestic policy issues, from health care to housing, tort reform to policing practices. Of late, we have a special interest, as many concerned with, in public life do today, with infrastructure. And this conference is part of a series of, uh, of similar conferences and research projects on both transportation and energy infrastructure. This morning's conference is a product of our Center for Energy Policy and the Environment, a, synergy, a center whose name reflects its underlying principle, that it is both possible and crucial for the United States to find ways to reconcile our mission to protect the environment with the need to meet our ever-increasing demand for the energy which fuels our economic growth and prosperity. The man who has served as the guiding intelligence for our center is our main speaker this morning, Peter Huber. In both his books, Hard Green, and The Bottomless Well, co-authored with Mark Mills. He's made the case that environmental stewardship need not come at the cost of growth and prosperity. His paper this morning grows most directly out of The Bottomless Well, subtitled The Twilight of Fuel, The Virtue of Waste, and Why We Will Never Run Out of Energy. It traces the history of energy consumption and argues that technological innovation can serve as the antidote to scarcity and historically has. It's received wide acclaim, garnered praise, for instance, from Bill Gates, who describes it as the only book I've ever seen that really explains energy, its history, and what it will be like going forward. Following Peter's presentation, we'll hear from a distinguished panel moderated by Stephen Hayward of the American Enterprise Institute, which will discuss the ways and means through which the idea of a national electricity grid might be realized. And finally, we're pleased to provide this forum for our closing speaker this morning, former New York Governor George Pataki who will reflect on the political challenges we face in balancing, balancing growth in energy supply with environmental protection. I turn now to Peter Huber, as I said, a senior fellow at the Institute and a regular contributor to our quarterly City Journal. He's the author of eight books, including In Addition to the Bottomless Well and Hard Green, Galileo's Revenge, Junk Science in the Courtroom, and The Liability Maze and Law and Order in Cyberspace. A regular columnist for Forbes, his work has appeared in the Harvard and Yale Law Reviews, as well as the Wall Street Journal, Science, Regulation, and National Review. Peter's a graduate of the Harvard Law School, holds a doctorate in mechanical engineering from MIT. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Huber. Well, to get some perspective on how big the grid is, uh, start perhaps here. Um, if you cast your mind back to breakfast when you opened your apple strudel Pop-Tart and popped it in the toaster. Um, the muscle behind that plug, the existing infrastructure behind it, the stuff already built and out there, can also power almost all the miles you drive in your SUV without even breaking a sweat. Uh, idle capacity, unused capacity in the system can, could, if connected directly to the wheels of our car, um, provide just about all the miles we drive in our passenger cars. Um, boost uh, output of the Power plants generate about 10% more electricity, and you could, in addition to that, uh, displace just about all the oil-fired residential heat in the country with electric-powered heat. Um, and by the way, you could do this um, at a price in our cars. Uh, we would get miles that gasoline engines could match only on gasoline priced well under a dollar a gallon. And in our residential homes, uh, at least off-peak electric prices, which are the prices you would get at night when you're heating most of the time, um, uh, would, uh, red, the electric uh, heat would readily beat $4 a gallon uh, heating oil. Um, electricity, not oil, uh, is in fact the heart of our energy economy. 
not in dollar terms. In dollar terms, roughly at the moment, um, at $100 a barrel, we're spending about $700 billion a year on oil in the United States. We are spending a mere $350 billion, half that, on retail electricity. So in dollar terms, we tend to think and worry and focus more on oil. But in energy terms, we pour much more, uh, as much raw energy into the uh, electric uh, grid as we get from all the oil that gushes into our cars and trucks and planes and chemical plants and factories and home furnaces.